everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Alex of Coyote Star Astrology and this is my video for the new moon solar eclipse in Taurus coming in on April 30th, 2022, which is a Saturday here on Pacific Standard Time. However, please do adjust for your current location on the planet as that time and date may change. And I was pleasantly surprised when I opened this chart yesterday. It's been a busy week. I was a little bit later than I normally am to settle in to the chart. And I was, like I said, pleasantly surprised. This is honestly a beautiful chart. It's kind of a sexy chart. Uh, it's gorgeous. And honestly, as far as eclipses go, I feel like this one is quite dazzling in the effect that it's going to provide sort of like a, a ledge for us to hoist ourselves out of some of the darker, more difficult energies that have been simmering over the last couple of weeks. So I think that I'm going to start there. I'm going to start talking about what we've been feeling over the last couple of weeks, which has been very, very intense. So first and foremost... We've been talking about this for a while, Saturn square the nodes. So we've been working through that energy. That's the reason that 2022 feels so internally intense. I was talking about this on my Instagram. I'm going to put my Instagram up there on the screen for those of you that don't follow me there yet. We were talking about that on my Instagram. I did a poll to ask how people were feeling about this and the results were staggering. I was feeling into the fact that 2022 feels much more inwardly intense than 2021 and 2020. Obviously, 2020 and 2021 were intense externally, being that the world we lived in previously pretty much got obliterated before our very eyes, and nothing has been the same since, nor will it ever be. And that's been a lot to process. But yeah, 2020 and 2021, it was like watching the world as you knew it go completely insane. 2022, on the other hand, has been like, yes, things externally are still wild. But now, because I believe because of this Saturn square the nodes energy, there's a lot of of internal shadow work happening that is very private, as we've been discussing, very raw. There's a lot of, there's a lot that's sort of shrouded in secret as we privately undertake the process of doing this shadow work. South Node Scorpio, again, is stuff that we are fearful about being exposed. It's the stuff that we really just want to uh, keep hidden from anyone knowing about it. It might even frighten ourselves to look at, right? South Node Scorpio doesn't mess around. So we've had Saturn square the nodes for a while. This is putting everybody through this deep shadow work initiation. Lots coming up around relationships. Lots coming up around self-sabotage. Lots coming up about finances, which I'll get to in a little bit. Uh, yeah, big, big shedding, death rebirth processes going on. Over the last week, we had Mercury cross the North Node. Now that influence was strongest around the 23rd, but we've definitely been feeling it over the last 10 days or so. It made the last 10 days really interesting, to say the least. Now, Mercury at the North Node sounds quite positive, and in many ways it is, because Mercury the messenger comes to the North Node, which represents the collective evolutionary journey, the collective evolutionary quantum leap and step forward, our collective growth. Having Mercury cross the North Node insinuates that we would have had some assistance stepping into that, and I definitely felt that as well as observed it in the lives of those around me. You might have noticed yourself feel, at least at certain points over the last 10 days, feeling more motivated to try, try again towards this vision that you feel 
sort of entering the field that represents some kind of better reality for yourself. Whatever that is that you're trying to manifest, over the last week or so, you might have sort of felt a new level of motivation to go after that. Now, that being said, by proxy, to have Mercury at the North Node, he also must stir up those South Node Scorpio energies. So this is what made it so intense that for many of us, yes, we might have made some progress, but we might have also been battling some of our demons that kind of might have popped up periodically over the last week to sort through. Such is the nature of the nodes. We'll talk more about that. So the other thing that I noticed, which took me a little bit by surprise, and honestly, it might be partially the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, which just so happens to be slamming my 12th house. Uh, The last week felt like, with Mercury crossing the North Node, to me, trying to figure out how to explain something that's very hard to explain, it felt like the collective hit hyperspeed when it comes to information, uh, new developments in the media. And I mean, yes, we've been bombarded with media crap for a few years now. We've kind of been on hyperspeed. I get that. But in the last week, we had some very, very interesting headlines that have implications around it that are mm, unsettling and mystifying to say the least. The one that is jumping to the forefront of my mind is the recent announcement that Elon Musk has bought Twitter. Anything around Elon is pretty interesting. Um, And I know that there's a lot of people that support Elon Musk because of the, you know, well-meaning humanitarian pursuits that this individual claims to be behind. And if if that was all I had to go by, I would very much probably feel the same. That being said, uh yeah, and I don't know how much I want to go into this on this on this podcast, but um or on this channel, but my spidey sense goes off majorly with good old Elon, and I have my reasons for feeling that way when I look at the agenda that has been unfolding for quite some time, and I I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. But what's more important to me than whether or not Elon is a good person or what his fucking intentions are is really this issue of technology and that the time of man merging with machine is no longer this thing that's far in the future. It's right here. I have a very dear friend who uh, has been going down to Santa Monica, which is about 20 minutes from where I live. Over the last few weeks, both times he's been down there that I know of, he's run into robots, little robots that are rolling around the streets, delivering food and whatnot. Um, and this, this is happening worldwide. So, and what's interesting to me about it is that it's unfolding simultaneously while we're in this very apocalyptic type of crisis, right? We've got the Ukraine thing going on. We've got gas prices soaring. Economic collapse seems imminent. We've got, uh, issues of food shortages kind of blaring on the media, Etc. All of which, by the way, most astrologers predicted would be coming this year because of the nodes where they are. We knew this was coming. What's really interesting to me is that simultaneously, in quiet, in secret, so is the rise of AI and technology, and nobody seems to think that this is strange. <laughs> it, it's very weird to me. I don't really know how else to say this, but for me, Mercury on the North Node was giving me these surges of realization around the fact that, and I'm going to be blunt, we are about to see a good amount of humanity put on a freaking VR set and check out of this reality into another one. Like, I don't really know 
if anyone's paying attention to that and what that means and the implications around that and you know i'm i'm pretty centered when it comes to everything that's been happening over the last few years i'm pretty damn centered when it comes to occult research uh i've known about this shit for a while i started researching agenda 21 and other things like it over a decade ago but when it comes to this topic I get a little bit unhinged and a little bit fearful simply because my love for nature and God and the human soul is pretty much the strongest thing that I have within myself. Uh, I digress. Thank you for listening to my rant. Mercury on the North Node for me brought in a surge. It, It really did feel like electricity to me. A surge of electricity, a surge of inspiration, And also with it came that south node energy of kind of the dark side of a lot of this change as well. There could have been fears and like I said, sort of demons raising their head in your life. Any of these self-sabotaging or self-defeating behaviors and also this feeling that in order to grab onto that north node, we have to let go of the south node. That's how the nodes work. And that's what makes them so beautiful. We can't get to our highest self without ending the patterns that keep us from being our highest self, right? So astrology really beautifully dictates that, that or illustrates that, that it, we can't have our cake and eat it too. If we want the dream manifested, we have to end and take responsibility for the patterns that are keeping us from that lifestyle. And I've said this before, and I've said it again, and this is very North Node Taurus, honestly. It's like, to become the person that you want to be, you have to act like that person. You have to make the choices that that person would make and stop doing the behaviors, patterns, cycles, or self-destructive habits that that person wouldn't do, right? So... Finally, let's come into this eclipse. What I love about it, first and foremost, is that it's a new moon at the North Node. We've got Uranus in between, which I'll get to in a minute, but we've got North Node activity. Taurus, of course, is a builder, it's an achiever, it's a manifester. Taurus helps us ground energies into the 3D reality, make them real, make them stable. Taurus is about fertility and growth, self-preservation, inner resources, self-esteem, and maybe more than anything, and this is probably something I'm going to put in the title of this video, self-respect. Taurus is about self-respect. It's about a relationship with ourself. Taurus is ruled by Venus, which yes, rules our relationships, but guess what dictates what kind of relationships you attract into your life? It's the relationship with yourself. It's how much you love yourself, right? So this is a Venus-ruled eclipse, which has a lot to do with self-respect, self-care, self-love, and the choices we make that reflect that back to us. A new moon is always about a step forward and the instinct to become something new. New moons are an urge to initiate actions in the direction of our goals. So that's the energy of this eclipse, and I feel like it's motivating us to step out of some of those darker energies that have been coming up over the last couple weeks, and because of the presence of Uranus, there's something about this energy that feels inventive, new, experimental. Uh, I wrote down a little quote, where the hell is it, when I was sort of, I was in the bathtub last night literally looking at this, channeling this um, eclipse energy. I wrote down the quote, I'm ready to try that new experimental way of building my dreams and loving myself. That's what this solar eclipse uh, felt like to me. Now, beautifully, we've also got Mars at 11 degrees Pisces in beautiful sextile to the new moon at 10 degrees Taurus as well. This gives this chart even more action, even more passion, vitality. Mars is, of course, our impulse to make things happen 
and go after goals. So that just gives this chart even more sort of ammunition to start these new intentions and this fresh start off with a lot of sort of like fuel and staying power, if you will. The new moon eclipse is also in beautiful sextile to all of this Pisces energy, our Venus, Jupiter, Neptune conjunction. This is our ideals. This is the fantasy. This is everything we're trying to manifest. And this new moon in Taurus, Taurus being the earth builder, is about bringing those manifestations to earth. But again, because of that presence of Uranus in between the North Node and that new moon, it's going to have to be Uranian. I can't stress that enough. What does that mean? This new phase, this new step forward, this new intention, and all of the energies surrounding this eclipse, there's going to be something Uranian about it, meaning it's got to be innovative, it's got to be different, original, experimental, unorthodox, against the mainstream, against what you would normally do, and it, it might scare us a little bit for that reason. I'm telling you, relationships, because the North Node is in Taurus, Taurus rules is ruled by Venus, relationships are taking radical, innovative, experimental new turns. Finances, same thing. North Node Taurus jumps forward with our finances. Got to be radical. It's like we've got to adapt to this, <laughs> this Uranian time that we're in, the technology, the science, the innovation. Everything is going through a Uranian innovation right now. And we got to sort of like keep up, right? So yes, I love this eclipse. It feels sparkly. It feels like a ledge for us to hoist ourselves up onto. Um, it does feel indulgent. I mean, Taurus is very indulgent. That sextile to Jupiter is indulgent, but it feels indulgent in all the right ways. It feels like an invitation to indulge in the things that are good for us rather than the things that are not. But again, as with an eclipse, this is about karma clearing. The choice is up to you. So choose decisions that represent that North Node in Taurus. Uh, and for me, it's been really interesting while we've been going through this Mercury on the North Node all this last week. And, you know, as I shared, my mind went into some pretty interesting places as far as what some of this might mean for humanity coming up with the merging, you know, transhumanism and all this crap. My antidote has been spending more time in the garden. I've got this beautiful community garden going with some friends and I've just been getting in there and weeding and watering and I mean, how Taurus is that, right? So the more we can connect with nature, the better in, in this moment in time. That really is that North Node in Taurus. Our relationship with nature represents our relationship with ourselves getting our hands in the soil, getting in those rivers or the ocean or whatever to ground some of this energy while we process and move through a lot of the South Node in Scorpio. All right, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and a share. I really appreciate it. I'm putting my Instagram up there on the screen. If you'd like to follow me there for more astrology, it's at earth to coyote and unfortunately, my bookings for readings are currently closed. I will be reopening them in about a month. If you would like to get on my wait list so that you'll be first notified when I do reopen scheduling, you can email me at coyotestarastrology at gmail.com and request to be put on my wait list. All right, everyone. Bye for now and talk soon.